And great honor to be here with you, subhanAllah, on this beautiful show where the Islamic Council of Europe in association with Huda Television are going to bring you this show which is all about Hajj and the questions that you have and bi idnillah the answers that we will be getting by one of our beloved Sheikh, Sheikh Haytham Al Haddad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brother Uthman, mashallah. Jazakallah. How are you, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah, very good. Good, alhamdulillah. Sheikh, I don't want to. Uh, talk too much, I want to get straight into the questions. So uh, without further ado, Sheikh, I'll ask the first questions and then mm -hmm. we'll go to some of the information about how our brothers and sisters can get in contact with you. Mm -hmm. So the first question, Sheikh, is, uh, should it be performed uh, without perfume and items without alcohol when a person is in a haram? So the person's asking, when they're in a haram, yeah. should they be uh, using perfumes or items without alcohol? Yeah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Uh, in the hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu when a person, um, he died, he was on his, account, on his camel and then uh, the camel uh, did something, so the man fell down and then he, um, the man died. So the Prophet Sallallahu said he was in a state of ihram. So yes. the Prophet Sallallahu instructed the companions and he said to them, yeah, uh, wash him, shroud him, but, okay, leave him in his ihram. Okay. Yeah, leave him in his ihram uh, and don't let his body touch perfume. Yeah, okay. And there is one narration don't cover uh, and don't cover his face, and there is another narration and don't cover his face as well. Okay, don't cover his head, and there is one narration don't cover his uh, face, but don't let don't apply perfume, okay, on his body or in his shroud, yeah? Normally, it is the sunnah to yes. apply perfume, okay, for the deceased when shrouding him, when washing him, shrouding him, yeah? However, uh, the Prophet ﷺ said, so don't do that. Yeah. Now, the scholars took from this and from other evidence, uh, such as, ثُمَّ الْيَقْضُوا تَفَثَّهُمْ وَلْيُوفُوا نُذُورَهُمْ that the muhrim should not apply perfume on himself uh, neither on his body okay nor on his clothes obviously for ladies they should not do that okay when they are outside their yes. homes anyway whether they are in a state of ihram or whether they are not in a state of ihram even if they are at home they cannot apply perfume if they are in a state of ihram now this is the general principle my dear brothers and sisters however I don't want our brothers and sisters to be over cautious about this. Yeah? And let me take this opportunity by saying that, my dear brothers and sisters, now you are about to perform the fifth pillar of Al Islam. Yeah? As we all know, the Prophet said Islam is built on five pillars, and the fifth one is Al Hajj. You are not about to do any kind of activity. Yeah? You are about to do an action that is considered to be the third best of actions. The Prophet ﷺ once said, uh, once asked, what is the best of deeds? So the Prophet ﷺ said, Imanun Billah. Then what? Then Jihadun Fi Sabilillah. Then he was asked, and then what? So the Prophet ﷺ said, Hajjun Mabru. You are about to do an action that if you do it according to the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, without being involved deliberately in major sins, okay, or deliberately in, uh, deliberately in major sins, or committing many uh, minor sins frequently and insisting on them, you will have all your previous sins wiped out. The Prophet ﷺ said, Al-Hajjul Mabrur laysa lahu jazaun illa al-Jannah. Now, that should be the focus, okay? Not, and you should ask, how do you, how should we perform uh, this Mabrur Hajj, how do we achieve most of our Hajj? Not to be worried or over worried about whether if I touch something with scent or with little perfume or with some maybe smell due to the chemical ingredients, will that break my Hajj or not? Okay, what kind of uh, soap should I use? What kind of, you know? The, if you are not using perfume, yeah, yes, and you are not intending to use perfumed soap, everything has a smell. Mm. 
Yeah. Don't be over cautious about this. Ma please, my dear respected brothers and sisters. Yeah. Normally people jump into these questions. Last year or the year before, I had a, a situation of a sister. She, yeah, she was not with uh, our group. I was giving a lecture in another group, so she came. This sister, she, uh, th this was in Medina, yeah? Since she left, okay, yeah. she was worried about uh, detecting or putting perfume, mm. yeah? So to the level that in Medina, she was not in a state of ihram in Medina, yeah? yeah? Medina Munawwara, so still we have not started the state of Ihram. So. She was avoiding walking to, towards the, the, the hotel from certain way because it has number of perfume shops and bakhur, you know, so, yes. in Medina. They put the bakhur so that everyone detects that. Yeah? I said, why sister? She said, because I don't want to break my Ihram. I said, my dear sister, do you think that if you detect perfume or even if you put deliberately perfume, that will nullify your hajj, that will break your ihram? No. Let us not be over cautious about these things. Yeah? You have not yet even entered the state of ihram. So take it easy, my dear respected brothers and sisters. Don't apply perfume. Don't intend to use perfumed material. Okay? However, you came the soap, you used the soap, you cleaned your hands after that, you did not intend that, it was not clear, fragrant soap, that just let it go. Okay? That <laughs> is the general principle. <laughs> People are asking, you know, toothpaste. Yes. It has uh, a taste, a or, taste a or, smell. or a smell. Yeah? Shall we use it or not use it? Yeah, Habibi, okay, make it easy. Use Okay, something that does not have that. However, you used it by mistake or you did not intend it, you did not put attention to it, or خلاص, use it. You are going to clean your mouth anyway. Jazakallah yeah. khair, Sheikh. My dear brothers and sisters, so we have that first answer and I think, it, mashallah, it summarizes what we really want to get to. We want to get to the core of what Allah wants from us and how we can try to attain that. So my dear brothers and sisters, we want you to get involved. Many of you have emailed your questions in. More of you, bi'idnillah, are going to be giving your questions live on the various platforms that we're streaming on. But for those that want to call in, by all means, please do so. You can pick up your phones. You'll find the number at the bottom of the screen. It's 0203 515 0505 that's 0203 515 0505 please do call in here live in the studio also you can send up send in whatsapp messages on 07533290550 that's 07533290550 so please please do get involved we'll move straight on to the next question sheikh um assalamu alaikum sheikh uh, how should a woman cut her hair when she how should a woman cut her hair when she both makes umrah and hajj and then in brackets tamattu? Okay. Yeah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Again, the matter is easy. Yeah. Don't be over cautious, my dear brothers and sisters, about these things. Okay. As the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Qaida un mula." Yeah. Or the scholars said, "Qaida un mula." Yeah. Little amount from your hair. If you can pull your hair together and just cut, yeah, or someone else cuts for you because some people are over cautious and they say that you cannot cut by yourself, yes. someone else has to cut uh, by you. Okay, the matter is not a big deal, yeah. If you uh, have, uh, what is it, um, these... Uh, braids. Huh? Braids or plaits? Uh, uh, braids, yeah. Yes. Okay, then each one and cut from them. If you do not have that, just pull it, as we said, and just cut a little bit that length. So Sheikh, you have in you, some cultures. You don't need to, oh, let me, how many millimeters, yeah, <laughs> okay. and just cut it and maybe have a meter and check and check that, did I, uh, have I cut from every single piece of fur or thread of fur? No, not like this. So Sheikh, yeah. well, in some cultures what they do, they don't take the whole plat, they take pieces and they just cut. So I have yeah, loose, no, that's, uh, that's, that's also fine. okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, alhamdulillah. Fine, inshallah, alhamdulillah. So the next question we have, assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Is yeah, there sorry. If sorry. she's doing hajj tamattu, yes. and hajj tamattu, obviously she will be doing umrah followed by hajj. Yes. So she will cut her hair after the umrah. Yes. Okay. 
remove the ihram and now no, she is not in the state of ihram then she does the hajj yeah yes and then she cuts the again so yeah. tw two cuttings inshallah yeah. so the brother asks uh, or the sister asks is there any hadith in which a man can, uh, can get rewarded or his dua is accepted when he looks at the Kaaba for the first time yeah okay um this is a good question. Many people uh, ask this question. There is no specific authentic hadith okay. yeah, about that. There are some statements from some scholars from here and there. Yeah, we wish that the dua will be accepted when you see uh, the Kaaba for the first time. Uh, maybe some people, I have read this, and it is a good explanation actually. They said when the person sees Kaaba for the first time, he is in an emotional situation so his heart is affected is taken uh, by that uh, scenery by the awe of the Kaaba and by the spiritual uh, uh, this the, the, the spirit, spiritual context at that time and therefore whenever he or she yeah does the dua it comes from their heart so, okay yeah from their hearts and it is very likely that once the dua comes from the heart, that it is acceptable, yeah, Inshallah. and okay. uh, or sorry, not acceptable, answered. Okay. Because every single dua is acceptable, but whether it is answered immediately or not, this is the second discussion. So don't worry, brothers and sisters, make dua anytime, yeah, any spiritual moment, make dua. Definitely, it is acceptable. But whether it will be answered immediately or not, this is another discussion. Alhamdulillah. Sheikh, on this very same topic, they often say, or within some cultures, they say one should keep their gaze lowered until they reach the Kaaba and then they stare upon the Kaaba. Is, yeah, is this, this some tradition? Is, uh, there is nothing like that. But I think those who said that, they said this out of respect for Kaaba. Okay. okay? It's not a big deal. Yeah. You want to do it, do it. Alhamdulillah, you don't want to do it. It's not no any, problem. Don't, don't make it an issue. Some people make it a, a big issue. This is bid'ah. Don't do that. It's not a big issue. Yeah. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Uh, the next question, Alhamdulillah, is touching uh, Hajj al Aswad or the Yemeni corner. Uh, does this remove sins? Yeah. Uh, the, uh, see, uh, uh, the, the, the Sunnah is to uh, kiss Al Hajar al Aswad. Yeah to kiss yes. Al-Hajar Al-Aswad if it is possible, okay? If it is not possible, just point to Al-Hajar Al-Aswad, okay, like this, okay? Not even takbir, it's not takbir. This is a mistake many people do. When you do tawaf, if you can kiss Al-Hajar Al-Aswad, then that's it. If you can't kiss it, some scholars said you can kiss it, uh, touch it by your hand, and yes. then kiss your hand. Some scholars said that it's not a big deal, okay? Or just point to Al-Hajar Al-Aswad. Yeah, it's not takbir like what you, uh, many people say. And when you point to Al-Hajar Al-Aswad, the black stone, you can say, uh, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, or Allahu Akbar, it's not a big deal. Now, uh, with Ar-Rukn Al-Yamani, ar Al-Yamani, the Sunnah is to, okay, just wipe your hand over it. Okay? okay. There are some statements by some scholars, there is no clear evidence. So just to clarify, Sheikh, if I don't have access to touch this, the Yemeni corner, yeah. if I'm a distance away, I don't make a, a recognition to touch it from a distance. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Even if you do, it's not a big deal. Okay. It is okay. not the Sunnah. The okay. Sunnah is uh, next to or opposite to Al Hajar al Aswad, the black stone. Yeah. Uh, and in between of the Ruknain, they are called the Yemeni Rukn. Yemeni means the southern yes. uh, corners. Yeah. Because they are towards the south of uh, Kaaba. Yeah, uh, you read. Uh, you read the normal dua. Does it? Is it? Is it? The, does it remove sins? Okay, kissing them or touching them. There are some reports. Some, yani, they are not very authentic reports about that. That they remove the sins. Uh, yani, as we said, we hope that Allah Jalla Ala forgives us for following the Sunnah and um, maybe wishing if that act. Uh, gets us close to Allah Jalla Ala and removes our sins. Jazakallah khair. On this very same topic, you mentioned about uh, touching it or from a distance with uh, raising your hand. Yeah. And likewise with the Yemeni corner, does this have to be specific to a hand or can it be any hand that you have? Uh, so left hand or right hand or? Yeah, normally with the right hand. Okay. But anyway, it's not a big deal. Even if you don't do that, 
Okay. Yani imagine a person could not identify where the Hajar al-Aswad is, the uh, Rukn al-Aswad, uh, sorry, the black stone, yeah, is, yeah, and he was doing, or she was doing tawaf, 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 okay, and it was not, uh, he could not recognize where that is, that is not a problem, insha'Allah, that is totally, that is acceptable, and it is not a problem. Jazakumullah khair, Sheikh. The next question is, uh, is it true that if a person visits the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa grave, uh, it is like visiting him uh, when, when he was alive? Uh, and are there any salawat to make when visiting him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Allahumma salli wa sallam ala rasulillah. See, visiting the grave of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yeah, uh, some scholars yes. said that it is good to visit that, yeah? Taban, of course, you cannot say that it is Sunnah because the Prophet Sallallahu already passed away. Yes. So that, how can he practice that, okay? So some scholars said, yes, do that, okay? Some other scholars said, visiting the grave of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not the key issue. The key issue is sending Salah and Salam upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay. okay? Now, the matter is easy. Imagine you are in the, uh, the, the, the masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu the mosque of the Prophet Sallallahu Obviously, anyone who loves the Prophet Sallallahu mm -hmm. obviously we, he will go and visit the grave of the Prophet Sallallahu Yeah? Yes. Alhamdulillah, inshallah, there is, uh, there is no problem with that. Okay? The key thing is, don't forget to what? to send salah and salam upon the Prophet Alhamdulillah. Yeah? This is the key thing. Now, is there any specific reward for visiting the grave of the Prophet I don't know of any authentic hadith that talks about uh, a specific reward for visiting the grave of the Prophet yeah? uh, in fact, In fact, our intention when we travel yeah, should be to visit the masjid of the Prophet وسلم, not the grave of the Prophet Okay? Yes. Yeah? The mosque of the Prophet وسلم, because the mosque of the Prophet وسلم, is the glorified place. Yes. It is not the grave of the Prophet Yes, that doesn't mean that we do not, of course, respect the Prophet وسلم, that doesn't mean that we do not honor the Prophet وسلم, whether he is alive or after his death sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but we follow the sunnah yes we follow the sunnah uh, of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said don't take my grave as a place of celebration yeah okay. which means that okay don't glorify it and don't give it a status above the status that I gave or Allah Jalla has given. The status that was given was given to the uh, to the mosque of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Salatun fi masjidi hadha, a prayer in my masjid is equal to 500 salawat, okay, elsewhere except Al Masjid Al Haram. Yeah? Al Masjid Al Haram, one salah is equal to 100,000 salawat. Yes. However, the problem is many people, they just argue over this issue and they don't focus on what is agreed upon, which is what? Sending salah and salam upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever sent salah upon me, yeah, one time, Allah jalla wa ala will send salah upon him 10 times. Allah when Allah jalla wa ala sent salah upon, one person, uh, upon the person, yeah, one time he, the Allah Jalla is putting rahmah, the salah from Allah, on a person is Allah Jalla is showering this person with his rahmah. Allah so when we say Allahumma salli wa sallam ala Rasulillah, my dear respected brothers and sisters, say Allahumma salli wa sallam ala Rasulillah, Allah Jalla is showering you with ten rahmah. Ten Allah See? Sheikh, what, other, what are the various ways or what's the the most beneficial way of sending salah on, on Prophet Sallallahu yeah. Alaihi Wasallam. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Rasulillah. There is a short version yes. and there is a long version. Yeah? 
Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Rasulillah. This is yeah, the shortest one. You can say Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Rasulillah wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Or you can say the long one that we say, the Darud Sharif, yes. we say in Salah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim innaka amidu majidu barik ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ibrahim innaka hamidu majid. However, inshallah the short version, especially the day of Jum'ah. Yani in, in a few hours, the Jum'ah will start. Yes. Yeah. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the best of your day, days is what? Yawmul Jum'ah. So increase more salah and salam upon me on Yawmul Jum'ah. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Rasulillah. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Rasulillah. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. What a, yeah. what a beautiful blessing that Allah yeah. subhanahu wa ta'ala has given Allah us. The next question is from uh, a, a dear sister. She says, Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. I'm traveling for Hajj soon, inshallah. Uh, my question is, my group will be going to do Umrah when we reach Mecca. So they'll mm -hmm. be going Mecca first. But if a woman is on her mentors, what does she do? The plane will make a stop on the way. Uh, this is where the people will change into their haram. If she is clean at the stop, then she will have a bath and make a haram. If she is not clean, when, what does she do if she's not clean when she reaches Mecca? Okay, okay. Yeah, this is, this is a good question. In fact, yesterday I was on uh, Islam channel and again we received this question. Yes. Okay, this question we receive it so frequent, so frequently. Okay, now, uh, see, it has a long version of it and a short version of it. See, all of you sisters, when you are uh, intending to go uh, for Hajj or Umrah alone or Umrah followed by Hajj. What you need to do when you get to the Ihram, whatever your case is, you yes. are on your menses or you are not on your menses, take a shower, yes. yeah, okay, uh, and intend to start your Umrah oh. or Hajj. Okay. This intention puts you in a state of Ihram. Okay. So now you are in the state of Ihram. Asma bint Umayz, the mother of, uh, sorry, Asma bint Abi Bakr, the mother of Abdullah bin Zubair, when she, when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was traveling uh, to do Hajj, yeah, uh, she, she gave birth, yes, yeah, so she gave birth, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said yes. to her, uh, do whatever any person doing Hajj is doing, do okay. the same thing. غَيْرَ أَنْ لَا تَطُوفِ بِالْبَيْتِ Yeah? Except don't do tawaf around the, uh, the, the Kaaba. The so, the sister on her menses, yeah? Because Asma, sorry, I said Asma bint Abi Bakr, I need to verify Asma, whether it is Asma bint Abi Bakr or Asma bint, okay? Uh, another Asma. Anyway, yeah? Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to her, do whatever the person doing Hajj is doing. Except what? Except don't do Tawaf. Okay. She was in her men's, uh, sorry, in her postnatal. Yes. Yeah, period. Nifas. Now, uh, then after that, she will do everything. Now, if she is doing Umrah, yes. please listen carefully, sisters. If you are intending to do Hajj Tamatta, which is Umrah followed by Hajj. So now you are in your menses and you are on the sixth day of Dhil Hijjah. Yes. Which means Arafah in a matter of three days. Yes. And your period will last. Hence, you won't be able to do Tawaf before what? Before the day of Arafah. Yeah. So you won't be able to do Umrah before what? Before your Hajj. Hajj. So this will not be Hajj Tamattu. Okay. So what you need to do is you need to swap your intention from uh, Hajj, Hajj Tamattu. Tamattu to Hajj Qiran according to the three madahib. Okay. Yeah? Okay. Um, Malikis, Shafi'is and Hanbalis. You need to change your intention to become what? Hajj Qiran. Why Hajj Qiran? Hajj Qiran, you are doing Umrah and Hajj in Hajj. Yes. So you are doing Hajj only, but it will be counted for you as Umrah. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, 
the actions or the, uh, the the actions of Umrah were embedded in what Hajj. in Hajj, yeah. Yes. Hajj includes the actions of Umrah. You need an intention for that. So the intention to make it one, yes. yeah, is called Quran, yeah. And then you need to do the sacrifice. Now, what is the benefit of this? If you are late and you are unable to do your Umrah. Do Hajj Quran, so you don't need to do a separate Umrah. Umrah. Your Hajj Quran will be sufficient. Okay. okay? So. Now, some scholars, yeah, might not accept this solution. Okay. So they don't say do Hajj Quran, so they say do Hajj Ifrad. Yeah. Okay. If you are following that madhab, okay, it's fine. Do Hajj Ifrad. Yeah. If you are not following that madhab. Then do Hajj Quran, it will be calculated for you as Umrah and Hajj. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Yeah. This okay. is the solution. Sheikh. Alhamdulillah. The next question is, uh, Assalamu alaikum, please, uh, please can we be told the Sunnah way of cutting or shaving the hair before we, be, uh, before we put on the Ihram? Can we trim the hair with scissors or does it need to be close wet shave? Uh, so if the Sunnah is to do every 40 days, uh, and I clean my uh, my private areas now before traveling. Then we at the miqat, and I only need to take a ghusl and trim the nails. Will this be correct? I am asking because I have chosen to share a room, a room package, or with multiple brothers in one room, uh, and it will be too much. It will take too much time in the bathroom to to deal with these issues. Yeah, the matter is flexible. Okay, if you trim it, if you yeah, and you shave your puberty hair from yeah. now, okay, and there is nothing to. You shave later, it's not a big deal. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Take the ghusl, it is sunnah. Take the ghusl, and once you reach to the, the, the uh, miqat, yes. okay, to enter the state of al ihram, alhamdulillah, later on, once you remove the uh, ihram of the umrah and you want to enter into the state of hajj, yeah, yes. the, the ihram for hajj. For hajj then if that is possible, alhamdulillah, if that is not possible, it's not a big deal, inshallah. Okay, alhamdulillah. Yeah. Sheikh, a question in regards to, you mentioned about the state of ihram. Yeah. Uh, and it, many of us have this understanding that ihram is the two pieces of cloth. Yeah. So maybe if you can give us a, yeah. a definition of... This is a good point. Jazakallah khair. There is a difference between wearing the two pieces of cloth for yes. men, yeah, yes. not for women, obviously, and entering the state of al-ihram. Okay. Yeah. Entering the state of al-ihram dictates that you remove the tailored clothes yes and wear what instead of them untailored clothes yes okay for men for women yes it doesn't dictate that okay okay so this is entering the state of al-ihram so entering the state of al-ihram dictates certain requirements okay one of them is changing your clothes and wearing those clothes that are not tailored on your body. Let us make it simple because some people make yes. it so much complicated. The Prophet Sallallahu said, لا يلبس المحرم. Yeah? The muhrim should not wear okay, trousers yes. and anything that is equal to trousers, such as... So anything that's shaped to fit the body? Yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, yeah. but but fitting the body, if it is because you know when you uh, what is it tight the the izar yes. the lower garment around your body, you are maybe shaping your body okay. in a way or yes. another. No, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, don't wear trousers. Okay, or what is equal to, to trousers, trousers is the you know under yes oh, wear. Well, okay, wave. yeah, uh, that has the two holes. Yes. Okay. And the Prophet ﷺ said Asalaam. also, don't wear al-qamis. What is al-qamis? The shirt. Okay. okay. The shirt, this is this, yeah, the long one. This is qamis. Yes. In Arabic language, we call it thob. This, we imported this from Saudi Arabia. Yes. Okay, but the actual Kamis. word for it is qamis. Yeah. Why? Because it has sleeves. sleeves. Yeah. And it looks like this. This is a long qamis. Yes. Yeah. So we have in the Pakistani, we have the shirwal and qamis. Yes. Yeah. So, and the Prophet Sallallahu said, and don't wear our, the muhrim doesn't wear the qamis. Yes. Yeah. The male muhrim. Yeah. 
So the and he should not what wear ولا uh, الإمامة. He should not wear a إمامة. Yes. Means covering his head with a إمامة or with a topi. Okay. Yeah. But you can cover your head like with an umbrella because it is not a إمامة. Yes. And it is not equal to the إمامة which is the topi. Okay. This is what the muhrim should avoid in terms of wearing. Okay? Yes. So this is the state of al-ihram. Yeah, he should uh, replace his normal clothes by clothes that do not match this condition okay. or these conditions that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi mentioned. And then for the male, yeah, he should not cover his head. Yeah, as we said. Yes. Wala al imama Yeah? Now, both male and female, they should not apply perfume. Okay. Yeah? Because of what we mentioned, yes. the uh, previous evidence that we have mentioned. They should not cut their hair, the okay. head hair. Yes. Okay? Now, there is a discussion about cutting other hairs. Okay. But generally speaking, this is what is yeah. yani, uh, stopped in during the state of al-ihram. Obviously, um, yeah, let us not get into that discussion. And he should not trim, he or she, both of them, should not trim their what? Their nails. Okay, nails. Yeah. Then, obviously, they should not get, they, there is no marriage. Yes. Yeah. No aqd nikah, yani. Yes. Okay. And no sexual relationship during the state of al-ihram. Yeah. Yes. And no hunting. Okay. okay. For both of them. So, these are... Uh, these are the prohibited things during the state of al-ihram. Yeah? yeah. So this is the state of al-ihram. Now, a person might, for whatever reason, violate wearing the clothes. Yes. So he might be in his normal clothes. Yeah. Yes. But in a state of al-ihram. So he okay. violated one condition yeah? of the yes, which is the normal clothes. One time we were traveling by plane, we came to the Ihram point, actually a few times, yes. yeah, whether for Umrah or for Hajj. And I remember one time recently, so the brother, he said, by mistake, my Ihram clothes, the two pieces, yes. is in the luggage. Okay. Yeah? It is not in his hand luggage. Yes. And they are passing by the Miqat. Yeah. So he said, what shall I do? I said, intend to enter the state of Al-Ihram now. He said, how come? I said, yes, in, in because you will be violating one only, yes. which is where still be in your normal clothes. Don't apply perfume. Yes. Don't cut your hair. Don't cut this and that. And of course, yeah, this. Yeah. Uh, uh, don't even cover your head. You are in a state of al-ihram. You violated one because yes. you you could not do it, yeah. And that can, yani, be overlooked and has some compensation. And inshallah, it can be overlooked. Don't do the mistake, which is no, no, no. I'm not going to enter the state of al-ihram until I Aha. find my two pieces of clothes and I'm able to to uh, change my clothes. Okay, Abdullah, we've got another question. Uh, mentioning in and around perfume it's a very simple one it says what is considered perfume uh, that is banned in ihram and uh, what is the difference no i'm not going to answer Khalas. this it is it, it, inshallah the, the matter is clear as we said perfume is known okay everything has a yani smell don't be worried about that yani Okay. Alas, no problem. Yeah. The next question is, when making dua after drinking Zamzam or Arafa or during Ta'af, we are to raise our hands during the supplication. Could you please, uh, could you also please tell us during Hajj uh, where it is that we should make dua uh, and when it is we should raise our hands or keep our hands down? Yeah, see, my dear respected brothers and sisters, it is not a big issue to raise your hands or not to raise your hands. Okay, do dua whenever possible. Yeah, do dua any time, brothers. Well, I sometimes, you know, we are making the deen so difficult for us. Yeah, and that's sometimes we are stopping making dua and making even salah and dhikr because we are making it difficult for us. One brother I remember, he was talking about, uh, you know, salah and he has to 
perform it in a khushur, in a good state, in a good place. And I said, Akhi, where, where in London and in this busy schedule, whenever you want to do salah, it has to be, as you said, proper salah. Yes. Yeah? This means that you are not going to do many salat. And he, this is, he said, well, this is what happened to me. I just do my five daily salawat because the other salawat, I, I said, Wallahi, you are missing a lot of khair. Yeah? Ya akhi, the Prophet sallallahu said, وَجُعِلَتْ لِيَ الْأَرْضُ مَسْجِدًا وَطَهُورًا فَأَيُّمَا رَجُلٍ مِنْ أُمَّتِي أَدْرَكَتْهُ الصَّلَاةُ فَلْيُصَلْ The whole earth is made a masjid for the Prophet sallallahu and the followers of the Prophet sallallahu Pray any place. As far as you are not 100% sure that this is najis. Yes. You haven't seen people urinating it or the urine or the najasa yes. is there. It is tahir, pray. Okay. Don't stop yourself from khair just because of this. Now dua. They, say, they ask, Sheikh, the dua in English can be accepted in any language, in Chinese, in English, in Russian, in South African, in any language. Yeah. The birds, when they do dua to Allah Jalla Ala, Allah Jalla Ala understands their dua. You think that yani Allah, Allah Jalla Ala does not understand your dua, subhanAllah. Yeah? Or Allah Jalla Ala will reject you just because you are saying dua in English yes. or in Urdu or, yeah? No, that is not true. Okay. Allah Jalla Ala will not answer my dua because I did not raise my hands. No. Allah Jalla Ala did not answer my dua because I was not in a state of wudu. Or... I cannot make dua unless I am in a state of wudu, raising my hands, wearing the right uh, garments. Some sisters believe that they have to wear hijab, you know, yes. b b when they want to make dua, facing the qibla. Yes. Okay. Now, this means that sisters, you know, in the when they are on their menses for eight days, they don't make dua. Allah Akbar. They don't make dhikr. Is that true? No. This is not true. This is not true. Making okay. the religion difficult. What about a sister? She is not waking, may, wearing. She is not, yani, may Allah guide her. She Amen. knows that wearing hijab is a must, etc. She is not doing it. She has a weak iman. She is wearing makeup. She is walking in the street. And one time she thought of Allah Jalla Ala. She became emotional. We say, no, 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 sister. Remove the makeup. Face the qibla. Go and wear hijab. Uh, do your wudu and then make dua, she will say, I will not. By the time she does this, she will lose her spirituality. So okay? the, the essence is make as much dua, make as much much dua whenever we can. Whenever, whenever we you can. can. Yeah, whenever you can, my dear brothers and sisters. Now, there are specific times yes. that dua is likely not to be accepted, by the way. Yeah? All dua is accepted. accepted. Okay. Even the kafir, yes. when he makes dua, makes dua sincerely to Allah. Yep. Yeah? His dua will be accepted. Allah Akbar. Yeah? Yeah. Right? If someone said to me, when I remember one time um, I mentioned this, then a brother told me, Sheikh, what is the proof for this? Subhanallah, I said, وَإِذَا رَكِبُوا فِي الْفُلْكِ دَعَوَ اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ فَلَمَّا نَجَّهُمْ إِلَى الْبَرِّ لَهُمْ يُشِرِكُونَ They are in, يعني, shipping, yes. uh, sorry, in, in sailing in the ship. And when the wind started and they are worried about themselves, they are kuffar, mushrikeen. Yes. Yeah. They made dua to Allah Jalla Ala. Allah Jalla Ala accepted their dua. Yeah. And listened to them. And then Allah Jalla Ala saved them. Subhanallah. Yeah. Okay. So Allah Jalla Ala is so merciful. Of course, maybe Allah Jalla Ala did not give them the reward in the akhirah, but Allah Jalla Ala gave them some reward. So the point is, my dear respected brothers and sisters, do dua anytime. There are specific times yes. where the dua is likely to be what answered immediately. The most important time for dua in Hajj is the day of Arafah. Okay. Yeah. The day of Arafah, my dear respected brothers and sisters, is your time. Try to consider that as an emergency time. This is what I say to people. Imagine that you are flying in a plane. Yes. And the plane was given one hour and it will crash and you are inside the, the plane. You are not going to, in this one hour, you are not going to spend your time in eating, drinking or some, doing something. No, you will just be doing dua to Allah. Sheikh, what, 
because of time, I want to press on. What what specific or what's one of the best du'a we can make at the time of Arafah? Yeah, so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the best du'a on the day of Arafah is what? To testify that there is no God but Allah Jalla The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the so best du'a on the day of Arafah that I have ever said and the previous prophets have ever said لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير. Okay. Now. Some people say, but this is not a dua, this is dhikr. No, it is dhikr and dua. Yeah. yeah. Now, if you are saying it and you are just saying, Ya Allah, I am not asking you something specific rather than I am testifying that there is no God beside you. Yeah. And affirming your oneness. And I, and I replaced my dua with this. Allah Jalla wa will give you whatever you wanted to ask him for Allah bi yeah? Allah. however if you wanted just to ask Allah Jalla for a specific thing ya Allah guide me ya Allah make me love you ya Allah make my children love you ya Allah make other muslims love you and do the dua that the prophet sallallahu used to do okay such as rabbana atina fid dunya hasanatan wa fil akhirati hasanatan wa qina adhab an-nar please my brothers and sisters don't forget to say this dua as much as you can throughout the Hajj. Allahumma anna ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husna ibadatik. Yeah? Yes. Oh Allah, help us to make dhikr of you, to, uh, to, to, to thank you and to perfect your ibad. On, to, to perfect our ibad. Jazakallah khair. On the question of dua, a brother has asked a question. What is the process of making dua when we're going between Safa and Marwa? We make dua, then we, ra we say la ilaha Allah, we, we raise our hands and make dua. He said, is there a specific process in which yeah. we need to okay. do? Okay, see, uh, while you are going to Safa, yeah? ascending or in these times because you might yes. go in the second floor or I think now even the ground floor you it's might flat. not yes. ascend it is flat you might not ascend anything but while you are going to Safa yeah you say in the Safa and Marwata min sha'ir illahi faman hajj al-bayta wa itamara fala yaduna alayhi an yaqawa fabima wa intaqawa khayran fa'inna Allah shakirun alim you can this is yani the yes. ayah of Surah Al-Baqarah uh, you 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 uh, you can read it okay yes. in the Yani Hasan al-Muslim or any book of yes. Adhkar. Uh, the, the, the other one, okay, once you are in As-Safa, try to face the Qibla, yeah, raise your hands yes. and say the following. And you can find it in any book yes. anyway of Dua. You can start by saying, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu lahu al-mulku wa lahu al-hamdu wa huwa al Sorry, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, three times. And then, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu lahu al-mulku wa lahu al-hamdu wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. La ilaha illallah wahdahu nasar abdahu wa anjaza wahdahu wa hazama wa hazama al-ahzab wahda. Okay? And make dua. Yes. And then, repeat the last one again. La ilaha illallah wahdahu nasar abdahu wa anjaza wahdahu wa hazama al-ahzab wahda. Okay? Okay. And then do dua, any dua. Yes. Any dua you like. And then finally say, La ilaha illallah wahda, La ilaha illallah wahda, wa nasar abda, wa anjaza wahda, wa hazam al-ahzaba wahda. And move towards what? Marwa. Al-Marwa. In Al-Marwa, yeah? Once you stand in Al-Marwa, try to face the Qibla and do the same process again. Jazakallah khair. The next question, someone's asked, can you recommend a book, a leaflet, a website that best describes Hajj according to the Sunnah? Yeah, so many. So many, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So, so many. You mentioned okay. one which is Hassan al-Muslim. Yeah, Hassan al-Muslim, nice. it has many authentic hadith uh, to hajj, hajj. There are many websites, alhamdulillah. Okay. Okay, alhamdulillah. Next question. On the 10th, what parts are absolutely compulsory to do uh, that we that we can delay until the, ele the 11th or the 12th as, there are lot, as there's a lot to be done and with the crowds it can be difficult? Yeah, that is a good question. See, my dear respected brothers and sisters, the best days of this life are the first 10 days of the hijjah yeah okay and as you know that there is a discussion whether the last 10 days of the hijjah are better than the first sorry the last 10 days of ramadan are better than the first 10 days of the hijjah or vice versa why is this because in hadith ibn abbas the prophet sallallahu said that there are no days in which the good deeds are more beloved to allah than those allah 10 Akbar. days of the hijjah there are no days Yes. Yeah. Okay. And the Prophet Sallallahu said increase. Okay. Takbir, tahmid, tahleel. Yes. Yeah. Increase. Takbir, tahmid, or increase tahleel. Tahmid, takbir. Yeah. 
وات از ات لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد على كل شيء قدير الحمد لله الحمد لله الله اكبر يا ايفن يو كان اد تسبيح يا انكريز ذكر ان جنرال انكريز جود ديدز ان جنرال يا سم بيبل فايند ريسيتيشن اوف قران مور يو نو مور انجيجينج فور ذيم يا in order to commit themselves so some people complete maybe the whole quran in the first five days of the hijjah or so on and one of the scholars used to complete the entire quran on the day of arafah Allah yeah Allah. just you know, because of the amount of reward anyway so uh, 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 the 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 point is and the last day uh, the, the last day of those 10 days which is the 10th day, which is the day of Eid al-Abha. Yes. Yeah. Many people, unfortunately, ignore it. Yeah. They don't put attention to it while it is the 10th day. In fact, there is a hadith. The Prophet ﷺ said uh, that, 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 uh, that there is a hadith that talks about the virtues of this last day. Yes. Yeah. Uh, in which the Prophet ﷺ said, أفضل الأيام عند الله yeah, يوم النحر The best of days in the sight of Allah جل وعلا is يوم النحر which is the 10th day. Oh, yeah? okay. um, and some scholars were discussing what is the best day. Is it the day of Arafah or the 10th day? Yeah, which is the day of Eid. Therefore, my dear respected brothers and sisters, I advise you to do as much as you can in the 10th day. Yeah, try not to delay anything. Muhammad. Yeah, uh, the Sunnah is immediately after you leave Muzdalifah, you go to Mina, do the Rami. Yes. Yeah, after doing the Rami, yes, go uh, and sacrifice if you are doing what Hajj Tamattu. Yeah. After sacrifice, ولا تحلقوا رؤوسكم حتى يبلغ الهدي محل عز الله وعلى سيد. Don't shave your heads until you sacrifice. Then shave your heads. Yes. If you are doing Hajji Tamattu. So. If you are not doing Hajji or Hajji Quran, if you are not doing Hajji Tamattu or Quran, stone and then go and shave your head. Yes. Now you can change your clothes. The Prophet ﷺ changed his clothes. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha applied perfume on his head when she prepared him to do what? To go and to do the tawaf. Yes. Yeah? So go and do tawaf. If you do these activities in the 10th day of Dhil Hijjah, that will be really great. However, for whatever reason, you could not, yeah? You can delay the tawaf, yeah? The key thing is do what? The stoning, yeah? Don't delay the stoning. Yes. Do the stoning and shave your heads. And now you have removed your ihram partially. Okay. And then... You can do the tawaf and you will be at a later uh, point. clear, yes, of okay. the uh, ihram status. Jazakallah khair. A very simple question. After performing hajj, can I perform umrah on behalf of a deceased person? Uh, umrah yeah, Adan? this is a very common question. If it is one off, do it, inshallah, that is not a problem. But some people, what do they do? After performing hajj, they keep back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Umrah, 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 to the level that you know, they plan, they, they say that we are going to do four umrah. So what do they do? They divide their so heads into four so parts. Um, yes. And they do one umrah and they, yes. they, they shave one part. one part. The second umrah, they shave the second part. Okay? And so on. Alhamdulillah, that became less these days. When I was young, I used to, I am still young, by the way, sorry. MashaAllah. Okay. I mean, I, when I was younger. Yes. Yeah? When I was like young. Okay, 15 or 20 on that age, yeah. Anyway, uh, I used to see it more. Okay. I'm yeah, I used to see it more. And people, w one off, inshallah, that is not a problem. Okay, on behalf of your mother, father, inshallah, that is not a problem. If you are, want to increase the number of umrahs, my dear brothers and sisters, doing tawaf is more virtuous than doing umrah. Allah. By the time you do umrah. You need to go to Masjid Aisha. Yes. Yeah? And change your clothes. This will take time. Then you will come. Do tawaf. And then say, by that time, you can do what? Four tawafs. Four full tawafs. 
يعني four times seven because each طواف is seven rounds. You can do it four times. This is more virtuous than the umrah. Jazakallah khair. A sister has asked, my mother is already freeing walking from Mina to Jamarat. You know. So can I throw the pebbles on her behalf? Yeah, this is a, again a common question. We say, my dear respected brothers and sisters, go there. Try to do it. Yeah, at least my dear respected brothers and sisters, do the first jamara on the 10th day. Do it because you are going to walk anyway. So do that. Yeah. Now, after that, you need two more jamarat. Yes. Okay. On the 11th and the 12th minimum. Or you can add to it the 13th. Yeah. Now, what you can do, don't do on 11 if your mother, uh, yani your mother is so ill, yes. don't do 11. On 12, do for both. Okay. 11 and 12. So accumulate the, accumulate, the day before. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, if it is really so difficult for your mom, then okay do it on her behalf it is not recommended what can we do yeah some some scholars allowed it okay do it but definitely if uh, she does it that is far far better and also let us because this is linked to the previous question regarding the dua yes okay my dear respected brothers and sisters don't forget that between stoning because we stone the first jamara the second jamara and the third jamara. Yes. Between the first and the second, it is sunnah to do a long dua. Yes. Yeah? So she will be missing that dua. Mm -hmm. Okay? She will be missing that dua. So she is really missing ibad. Yes. Yeah? So don't take it lightly. Yeah. Okay. The next question, uh, as a program, do we fast during, during the days of Hajj? Yeah. Okay. Now, regarding the days of Hajj, all the scholars agreed that it is good to fast up to the eighth day. Okay. Yeah. All the scholars agreed. Even if you are in a state of ihram, even if you are traveling, if you can fast, obviously, this is better, better. because this is one of the good deeds. In fact, I don't want to mention this. Maybe I'll mention it in a conservative way. Some scholars said if a person can fast in Arafah, yeah. Yes and that does not hinder him or her from the dua, etc., okay, he can fast. Allah. It is true that the Prophet ﷺ did not fast on the day of Arafah, yeah, because the Prophet ﷺ wanted to teach the Sahaba, mm -hmm. yeah? If he were to fast, everyone will fast, Yes. yeah? So the Prophet ﷺ wanted to teach the Sahaba, otherwise no one would stop you from, okay, uh, fasting and this is I think the opinion of most of the scholars <laughs> okay okay leave the day of Arafah because some people you, you will just yani, when they hear this they will say oh the sheikh is saying a very strange opinion no it is in the books of fiqh yani. yes. okay, I'm not just mentioning something from my head yeah astaghfirullah uh, however okay leave the day of Arafah aside yeah fast the first day second day third day fourth day fifth day sixth day and the eighth day, which is the day of Tarweeh. Why don't you fast? Why Take this you opportunity. Miss? Yeah. Tazakallah khair. The next question, what happens on the day of Eid for the pilgrims? Where do they pray Eid namaz or Eid Salah? Yeah, okay. That's a good question. On the day of, uh, in, in, uh, uh, on the Eid day, yeah, the Sunnah, yes, the Sunnah is not to establish the Eid prayers in Mina. Yeah? Okay. Because we will be in Mina. Yes. Yeah? Uh, the Sunnah is not to establish the Eid prayer in Mina. Okay? In fact, this is yani, against the Sunnah to establish it. However, if it was established in any masjid around Mina and you are there, join. No problem. In Haram, yeah? In Al Haram, they do it. Yes. Yeah? And I prayed once. The, the, the Eid prayer with them. Yeah, okay. yeah. No problem. You do it. There is nothing against that. Okay? But to establish your own Eid prayer, that, no, this is against the Sunnah. Some scholars said because you are considered to be in a different state. Some scholars said it is because of the Nusuk. Okay? I mean, they said because of the Nusuk. Some other scholars said because you are doing 
sorry, you are in a state of suffer, they consider the person who is in a state of ihram in that period, yes. he is in a state of suffer. So they said, Eid is not wajib upon you. Okay. Different explanations, but the Prophet didn't, okay, didn't do, it. do it. That's it. So I think we've answered this question, but just again, a yes or no answer would suffice, I think. Is it permissible to brush, uh, brush your tongue or, or your teeth with certain instruments that you have while in the state of ihram? Of course, it is good to clean your teeth all the time. What is it? Do you think that is, yani, Sharia wants you to have a bad breath? Very true. Sah. Okay. It's yeah. very true. Of course, clean them. Yeah. It uh, doesn't mean to intend to be in a terrible situation. Sah. Yeah, or have bad breath. A common question for many of our sisters, does falling hair caused by brushing a woman's hair break a haram? No. Okay. okay. And don't worry about that. Don't be paranoid about that. Okay. I'm yeah. Now. The next question, uh, and I think we've uh, we've answered it briefly. Do we have to make dua uh, for if if da on the tenth al ifada on the tenth or the thirty or can we wait until the thirteenth? Yeah, you can wait until the thirteenth. That is not a problem. But as we said, okay, it's better if you can do it. The on the Should we make uh, dua for wida before leaving Mecca? Yeah, dua for wida before leaving Mecca is a wajib according to most of the scholars. Yeah. And if somebody doesn't do it, then yeah. If and according to this opinion, then they should uh, they, they 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 should sacrifice because they missed a wajib. Okay. Yeah. And to be on the safe side, you need to sacrifice because okay, just to uh, to be on the safe side because it is uh, has been stressed on. Okay. And the jumhur, most of the scholars believe that it is wajib, except for the lady that experienced. Her menses. Okay. Yeah, that is okay. She is the exception. Yeah. Uh, Salaamu alaikum, Sheikh. What's the ruling on women covering their faces when performing Umrah? That is not a problem at all. My dear sisters, the Prophet, وسلم, when he was asked about women's clothes, yeah, he said, La tantaqibul muhrima. He didn't say the muhrima should not cover her face. This is a big misconception. Not a big, uh, yani, I mean, it's not a big issue anyway. It is uh, yani, a, a, a common, sorry, yes. a common misconception. misconception. Th they, should, they think that they should uncover their faces. What is prohibited is to wear something yeah, that has two holes or one hole for the, uh, the eyes. Okay. So anything to cover the face, yeah, anything, you know, cover, etc., Inshallah, that is not a problem at all. Alhamdulillah. The next question is, Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wearing sunscreen can sometimes cause a layer that which can prevent water uh, touching the skin during wudu. Yeah. Don't be, okay, paranoid. Okay. Okay. When you put the sun cream, you are not putting it as a layer that can be removed as yani, like, okay. You are putting it as an oil, you are putting an oil, yeah? Yes. On, on your uh, skin. And don't be paranoid, okay? Alhamdulillah. This is a, a, another question, Alhamdulillah, I think with a straightforward answer. Can we do wudu from water spray bottles or does it have to be from flowing water? Allahu Akbar. So they may ask, Sheikh, does it have to be water with ice or does it have to be cool water or warm water? Shall I answer this question? I think we should give them the benefit of the doubt and uh, answer the question, inshallah. Any water, ya habibi, any water. Okay, bottled water, non-bottled <laughs> water from the spring, from the Nile, from the Euphrates, from the Thames, from, okay, from any kind. As far as it is called water, okay, collect rain water, okay. He said what? It should be what? From S spray. A spray. spray bottle, yes. Uh, often in Hajj, you find many people have the bottle that sprays, so you get refreshed with water rather than having a bottle that you just. Uh, them, so bottle. this, they want to, yani, make wudu from that spray. Yes. Okay. Any water. Uh, yeah. The next question: Are we required to stay in Mina for any consecutive days, or can we go back to Mecca, returning to Mina the next day, and continue stoning? Yeah, this is again. This is a good question. Um, again, a common misconception, my dear brothers and sisters. Staying in Mina is an act of ibadah. So therefore, once we, you know, go to Mecca, do our tawaf, do our sa'i, yeah, on the 10th day, we should go back to Mina 
and we stay as much as we can in Mina. Okay, this is the khair. Yeah. Okay, this is the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And as many scholars said, staying in Mina on, okay, the 10th day, the 11th day, yes. and the 12th day. Yeah? And if you want, the 13th. Yes. Yeah? Either two days after the 10th or three days. As Allah Jalla Ala says, فَمَنْ تَعَجَّلَ فِي يَوْمَيْنِ فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ وَمَنْ تَأْخَرَ فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ لِمَنْ إِتَّلَى The scholar said that is better in staying in next to Kaaba. SubhanAllah. So staying in Mina in those days? On these days for the Hajj. SubhanAllah. Yeah? It's better than staying what? Next, next to the Kaaba. Allah Akbar. Because that Ibadah, Allah Jalla Ala is the one who, who, yani, who told us to stay in Mina? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because Sallam. Sallam. he stayed in Mina and he said, Khudu anni manasikakum. So this is Allah Jalla Ala is the one who legislated this. He said at that time, this place is better than other places. We should stick to that. We should not say, no, 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 no. I want to go to Kaaba and stay my time next to Kaaba. No. Okay. Staying in Mina in of itself. Even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ayyamu at tashriq which is, يعني 11, 12, 13 أيام أكل وشرب وذكر لله جل وعلا So you stay in Mina Make ذكر في الله جل وعلا Eat and drink and enjoy your time In Mina And this is an act of عبادة الله أكبر الله أكبر This is an act of عبادة What else we want? We are making it, you know, difficult for ourselves Yeah Subhanallah Chef, the next question The brother says My scalp uh, often gets dry, itchy, and develops dandruff very quickly. No, I have well, to apply. Give you a cure. Uh -huh. I mean, I have to apply oil after I wash, um, uh, after I've had a, uh, after I've had a wash, and often it's very difficult to find unscented oils. Mm -hmm. So he says, "Can I apply this during ihram?" Yeah, Habibi. What about uh, olive oil? And Sheikh, if it's a medical, if the brother say has a medical condition, he has to apply yeah, certain. No, no, no problem. problem. No problem. Khair. Because this scented, you know, oil. This is. Not perfume. This yes. is the chemicals. Yes, yes. Yeah? Don't intend for something perfumed. Yes. Okay? And the other, ev everything has, you so know. So, where's something has, natural? Yeah. Everything has, you know, uh, some uh, smell or, smell or something. Even your, 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 yeah, your sweat has a smell. Yes. Okay, but you might say that it is not scented. Yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. Subhanallah. Don't Sheikh, mm. uh, uh, a very simple question. Travel insurance okay or not? Yeah. Uh, travel insurance is problematic. Why? Yes. Yeah, because I have to explain it. Because Please. you are paying money, and if something happens, they are giving you money. Okay. So it has the biggest problem of insurance, which is riba. Okay. So it is money for, for money. more money. If it is money for anything other than money, maybe we can overlook that. Okay. But money for money, riba. No way that it is halal. Jazakallah uh, khair. The next question, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, is praying two rakat salah behind the Miqat Ibrahim uh, required for the, sun, for the Sunni Hanafi Madhab? Yep. See, it is, it is Sunnah, okay, not required. It is Sunnah for all Madhab. Yes. Yeah? Taib. Allah Jalla Ala says, وَاتَّخِذُوا مِنْ مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ مُصَلَّى Okay? And uh, yani mean with the translation of this, and take the maqam of Ibrahim as a place for salah. And the Prophet ﷺ performed two rak'ah behind the maqam of Ibrahim, yeah, after he performed his ta'at. However, some people, unfortunately, yes. you know, my dear brothers and sisters, annoying people or avoiding annoying people takes precedent over maybe most of the sunnah yeah most of the sunnah the other day a brother in the in the in the line yeah okay he was doing tawarruk tawarruk is the way you sit in the last uh, tashahud and the place was small yeah and he insisted to do tawarruk and he annoyed the elder person next to him and you know some of our elders they cannot handle these things I said to him, Ya Habibi, take it easy. Yani, you want to apply Sunnah, you annoyed the other people. 
or maybe mm. hurt them. No need. So similarly, it is sunnah to pray behind the uh, maqam of Ibrahim. All scholars yeah. said that. However, don't annoy the people who are doing tawaf. Yeah? The precedent, okay, is given to the people who are doing tawaf. And that's why this scholars, all of them agreed that you can do it anywhere in the haram. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Even if you don't do it, it's not a big problem. Okay, so anywhere in, yeah. in the haram, inshallah, if yeah. you can't get behind. Okay, this is a very important question for those not going for hajj. Mm. For those not going for hajj, what, what are the recommended acts during the days of Dhul Hijjah? Yeah, okay, this is a very good uh, uh, question. As we said in Hadith ibn Umar, the Prophet said so that said there it. are no days in which the good deeds are more beloved to Allah Jalla Ala than those 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. So do plenty of, as we said, yeah, okay, tahleel, tahmeed, takbir, yeah. لا إله إلا الله حده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد على كل شيء قدير الحمد لله الله أكبر أن يكن أتود سبحان الله or any ذكر yes but in particular this أذكار okay so this is number one priority okay with it comes recitation of Quran because it is the best of ذكر however in those days the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم mentioned those ذكر in particular so it is priority number one of course, you can do that with Quran in order just to combine. Any other good deed, yeah, sadaqa, yeah, yeah do that. Fasting, those days, do that. Qiyamul uh, Layl, during that, do that. Doing a lot of nawafil, praying your duha, yes, praying the Turak after wudu, do that, okay. During those 10 days, you can do a lot. Now, some people said, what about da'wah? What about, you know, visiting family and friends because it is Silatul Rahim? I said, brothers, there are certain times Allah Jalla wa Ala specified certain acts of ibadah. Yes. So Allah Jalla wa Ala wants you to, during those times, to focus on these listed ibadat. Yeah? Other times you can do da'wah, you can do talab al-ilm, etc. During Arafah, yeah, some people are doing talab al-ilm and they are discussing masal. No, during Arafah, focus on what? Dhikr, istighfar, tawbah, to Allah Jalla wa'ala, and dua. Yeah, during Arafah. It's not the time for you to do da'wah. It is not the time for you to, to, to study knowledge and, okay, call families and friends. and Unless what? There is a scholar and he needs to answer people. Yes. People's questions. So, of course, because now there is a specific case for this particular person, yeah? Or a person who made, for example, his mother angry or, yeah? And he, during Arafah, he repented to Allah Jalla Ala. So, he's calling her, mom, forgive me, please. Yes. Okay. okay? Uh, or un his uncle, cousin, something like this. Other than that, no. Dedicate your time for those ibadat that Allah Jalla wa Ala is specified in those so, days. So, Sheikh, what about those who wish to make a sacrifice? They say that some people... Yeah, okay. I was going to ma mention that. And the Ubhiyah. Okay. Yeah, the Ubhiyah is the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Sallam. Wa sallam. As we know, the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made Ubhiyah with two kabsh, two lamb, uh, ram. Yeah. Okay, two rams. So, it is highly recommended Sunnah. As you know, the Malikis and some other scholars consider it as wajib. Yeah, okay. even Imam Ahmad said, if you want to, uh, if you don't have money and borrow money in order to do the udhiya, inshallah, Allah Jalla wa Ala will give you the best compensation. Yeah, so do the udhiya as well. Yeah, and for those people who are not in Hajj and they're doing, the, they say some people for your nails and your hair that you don't cut or remove? Yeah, this is not a big deal, okay? okay. If you want to do obhiyah, yeah, and if you avoid cutting them, okay? Or if you cut them, it's not a big deal, yeah. Okay, okay. Don't People, they, uh, during the last 10 days, the first 10 days of the hijjah they, their main issue is, oh, have I cut it, have I not cut okay. it, yeah? And instead of just focusing on the dhikr of Allah Jalla Ala and so on, they are just focusing on these technicalities we are obsessed with the you know, details with the not just details of ibadat yeah technicalities of ibadat
Yeah. So, Sheikh, the next question is, uh, Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. I'm going for Hajj and my package includes Qurbani or includes Qurbani. To what extent do I need to check the Qurbani has been done or complete? Yeah, the, you don't need to do that. Okay? You don't need to do that. So long as your group tell you that yeah, it's been done, it is, it is done. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. The next if question. If they are honest people, and okay. Inshallah. Yeah. Okay. The next question is uh, again to do with Qurbani. Uh, how does the Qurbani shares work? Uh, does the head of the household do a share for each member of the household? Okay. Yeah. This is a good question. Now, see, in terms of Qurban. Yes. First of all, there is the Qurbani that is called Ubhiya. Yes. Yeah. The Ubhiya is to be uh, 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 the Ubhiya is the sacrifice that is done by those who are not going for Hajj. Okay. However, even the person who's going for Hajj, he can do the Ubhiya. Yeah. Yeah. And as we said, it is highly recommended. So now some scholars consider it as wajib. So this is the Ubhiya. There is also the Hadi, okay, of Tamattu and Qiraat. Yeah, the sacrifice for those people who are doing Tamattu Hajj or Qiran Hajj. Each individual, even if you as a parent uh, does it on behalf, does mean the Hajj, I mean the intention of Hajj on behalf of your children, yeah, then you need to sacrifice the hadi yes. on be their behalf. So this is a matter of individual okay. obligation upon the hajj who is doing hajj tamattu or qiran. Okay? Yes. And the third type is what? Is a sacrifice for what? For compensation. If the person misses a wajib, yeah, then he or she should Make up that wajib, if possible. If not possible, the wajib time has gone, they, so they cannot make it up. Then they do what? Then they do the sacrifice. Okay. Okay? Now, the ubhiya, yeah, the ubhiya, the household can do the ubhiya, and it covers the members of the, okay, household. So, the, 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 sorry, the head of the family can do the ubhiya on behalf of the other members of the household. If they want, every one of them wants to do his or her ubhiya, that's fine, no problem. But, okay, it will suffice if the, uh, the head of the household yeah, uh, does that. Or one of them to do it on behalf of others. The hadi of hajj tamattu or hajj qiran, as we said, the it is obligatory upon every single Hajj who is doing Hajj Tamattu or Hajj Qur'an. And the third one is what is when you, when the Hajj uh, misses a wajib. Yes. Okay. Or the Hajj commits a violation and he chooses to go for, uh, for, uh, for, for, for sacrifice. Yeah. Uh, Sheikh, the question that we have here, uh, it, can a can a woman who has no mahram in her family in Europe go for Hajj? Yeah, I strongly believe that she should not. Okay. Okay. Uh, why? Th during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu the Prophet Sallallahu said, "La tusafiru al-mar'a in a khutba." A lady should not travel a long distance. Yani, okay, of one day travel distance or three days travel distance. The scholars. Yani differ how to interpret that yes. now. Anyway, but a long journey, definitely from Europe to Mecca is included in that. Okay? Uh, except with a mahram. So a man came and said, Ya Rasulullah, my wife was appointed to, uh, sorry, I was appointed to go for jihad. And my wife is doing hajj, yes. traveling for hajj. The Prophet Sallallahu said, go and join your wife as a mahram for her hajj. Yeah? Um, yes. The Prophet Sallallahu so said, la tusafir al mara A lady should not travel that distance without a mahram. So it is clear. Now some scholars said that she can travel, now it is secure, etc., etc. I do not accept that at all. Yeah? Because the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu is clear and this is a matter that most of the previous scholars accepted it. And by the way, sisters, we have went to Hajj a number of times. We have seen how difficult that is for our sisters. Yes. And I remember one time, yeah, 
uh, I was going for Hajj, one of the sisters, yeah, she didn't travel with her, she was on 50 something, yeah, yeah, yeah. nearly 60. She traveled without her mahram, okay? I don't know why the group took it. It is a different group that I'm going with now, okay? Um, another group took it anyway. And she got lost. Allah Akbar. Yeah? She speaks little bit English. She speaks Urdu. She got lost. And she did not have her mobile phone. Or I don't know, the battery died or yes. um, I don't know what happened. Wallahi, she suffered a lot. Not she suffered a lot. And what happened? She had to, she, she was moving, 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 begging people to give her a mobile phone. She doesn't know anyone. All what she knows is a, a telephone number yes. of a person, her daughter or something in England. Subhan Obviously, no one would give her yes, to, call to, to call international call. Until re, yani she found someone speaking Urdu, she begged him or her, I don't know, she called someone in England yeah, to call her, uh, one of her relatives who lives in Mecca. Yes. Yeah. So she called someone in England and that person in England called someone of her relatives in Mecca. And that person, he was not doing Hajj. Subhanallah. Okay. So he went out of his way to go to Spain and he was looking for her, okay, in where? In Mina. Where are you going to look for? One lady in millions, millions yes, of Allah. people. Yeah. And then she came after I don't know how many, 12 or 13 hours to the tent. Subhanallah. Yeah. Now many sisters say, no, 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 no. We know our way. There is now GPS, etc. Come on, sisters. Okay. We have seen that. No need, okay, to 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 to, to risk your safety. If Allah Jalla wa Ala, yeah, gave you the excuse, Shem don't Shem. think that your reward will become less. Allah Akbar. Yeah. Khalas. This is yani on the day of resurrection, Allah will not hold you accountable. Why didn't you go for Hajj? Allah will not diminish your status because you did not go Hajj and you could have done so. No. SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah, Jazakallah Khair. Sheikh, we have a few minutes left. Yeah. Uh, if you could please kindly share some words about uh, for those going on Hajj and those staying here, how they can maximize and benefit from the, the Yeah, the this is a good question. Hijra. See, for those who are going for Hajj, what I found it yani, beneficially through yani, my experience with those who go for Hajj, etc. If they set a target for themselves that I want to go for Hajj, and this Hajj, I want it to be a Hajj that is acceptable by Allah Jalla wa Ala. Yeah? That is a Hajj that is Allah Jalla wa Ala will be pleased with. A Hajj that is Mabroor, that yeah. the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah this Hajj Mabroor has no reward less than Jannah. A Hajj uh, that wipes all my previous sins. Allah yeah? As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the one who performs a hajj, yeah, without committing major sins, yeah, or involving in uh, minor sins mm. deliberately and keep repeating them, not the sins that can happen from anyone and that can mm. be overlooked, okay, the minor sins, yeah, and follow the sunnah as much as he or she can, yeah, he will have all his previous sins removed and he Allah will come Akbar. back from Hajj as a new born baby. Subhanallah. Allah Akbar. Imagine. Allah Akbar. Wallahi. Wallahi. That's why my dear respected brothers and sisters, if anyone has the opportunity to go for Hajj, how many days are you going to be tired? Yeah? How <laughs> yes, much are you going to spend? 5,000 pounds? Yeah? You will be tired for five days, 10 days, and you will have that achievement. Allah Akbar. Yeah? that achievement, then my dear respected brothers and sisters, don't miss that opportunity. Allah Akbar. Yeah? Though, so, so this is for Hajj. Now, this should be your target. Don't be obsessed with the technicalities. This is scented. This is not scented. Uh, a piece of hair fell yes. down. Uh, I used uh, this kind of soap. Uh, no, 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 no. People focus on this is 
soap, scented, not scented, hair, etc. Yeah. Uh, yani one brother, he said, Chuk, look, look, can I remove this? Okay. But his finger was, his, sorry, his nail, nail was chipped. Nail was, yeah, chipped. And, but they don't mind in arguing, yeah, in shouting, in using bad words yeah, to their fellow Muslims. Yeah. Uh, they don't uh, mind in pushing them and secure their own places, okay, a bigger place for mm. themselves. They are not tolerant. Yeah, they might not put attention to repent to Allah Jalla mm. If they have angered their parents or their close family members, they don't put attention to ask them for forgiveness and to mend the relationship. Mm. This is a problem, a serious problem. Okay, let alone as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Sallallahu yeah, about those hujjaj who come and they have acquired haram money. Yes. Their income is coming from haram sources. Yeah? And they do, they go for hajj. No. Atibmat amaka takum mustajabid da'wah. Have halal income, your da'wah will be what? Likely to be accepted. accepted. Okay? So, this is what they, we should focus on, my dear respected brothers and sisters. Now, those who are not going for hajj, they should focus on what? As we said, the first 10 days of the hijjah are among the best days of the year or the best days of the year. Sheikh, Jazakumallah khair. On that very note that we yeah. should make the most of the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah for those going on Hajj and for those who don't have the opportunity for going for Hajj. My dear brothers and sisters, on your behalf and my behalf, I'd like to sh thank our beloved Sheikh for taking the time to answer our questions. And for those going Hajj, we ask Allah that he accepts it uh, from you. Amin, for amin. those who aren't going, we ask Allah that he reunites you with the Kaaba again and he gives you the opportunity to go again and, and again. My dear brothers and sisters, please, please do stay tuned with Islamic Council of Europe. Follow them, like them, get to know them. Likewise with Huda Television. On that note, my dear brothers and sisters, we ask Allah that he accepts uh, this sitting. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The Islamic Council of Europe is a premier service provider in arbitration, reconciliation, and mediation, providing guidance and solutions based on Islamic principles. The Islamic Council of Europe aims to help Muslims who are seeking to conduct their affairs in accordance to Islamic guidelines. Services include advice and guidance on interpersonal, social and financial issues, marriage validation or dissolution, and help in resolving disagreements between disputing parties, either among spouses, families or business partners. All cases are handled by qualified Islamic advisors in the strictest confidence and utmost privacy. The Islamic Council of Europe, providing support, guidance and solutions.